Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have joining us today Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. So the last few weeks in Neighborhood Nature we've been visiting places around the city to look for nature but this week we would like to show you some of the nature we have seen in our own backyard. So everything in this episode has been solely from our backyard. We have a lot of sparrows in our yard and this is one of them right here called a clay colored sparrow. You can identify them by the sound that they make. They sound a bit like an insect, so you're more apt to hear them than you are to see them. It sounds something like this. House finches are another common bird in our neighborhood, and we see them often in our backyard. The males sing a lot, and the song sounds different depending on where the house finches live. For example, in St. Albert, the song has a slower tempo with a relaxed quality, whereas in Edmonton, the song is a lot faster. In the following two recordings, the first song will be from St. Albert, and the second song will be from Edmonton. And now for the Edmonton Finch. The first song was a lot slower than the second. Junkos are our frequent visitor to our yard. They can be slate gray like this one, or brown like this one. This one, for some reason, has decided to puff its feathers out. This gives you a good idea of how much the shape of a bird can change, depending on the position of the feathers. We have a natural area in our yard which often has wildflowers. This plant here is called scrambled eggs, and this one is called creeping charlie. We keep an eye on the plants that come up in the patch and make sure that we take out any noxious weeds. We often find a lot of interesting insects in this area of our yard. Yesterday Lisa spotted this dragonfly on our deck. We think it is a variegated meadowhawk, but personally we call it a candy striped dragonfly because of the peppermint-like markings on the eyes and abdomen. Dragonflies can be kind of skittish to photograph, so you have to move very slowly. Here's something that loves to eat insects. It's a northern flicker, and she has discovered the anthill in our backyard. Flickers are woodpeckers, and this makes more sense when you picture them sideways as if they're pecking against a tree instead of the ground. We know that this bird is a female flicker because males have a black mustache stripe running from the corner of their beak down to their chin. You can see that our bird doesn't have any markings on her cheek, so she must be a female. She uses her beak to throw pieces of anthill through the air to uncover the ants underneath. We see flickers in our backyard once in a while, but here's a bird that we've only ever seen in our backyard once. It's a house wren. House wrens like to be undercover, and this one has chosen to forage in our thickly planted garden and you really have to watch closely to be able to see it. Sometimes nature from our backyard makes its way into our house. Especially if you have an animal biology student living with you. This is a zebra jumping spider, which we often find on the fences in our backyard. Jumping spiders have great vision. If you wave a finger in front of them, they will respond to your movements. Some individuals are camera shy, but others, like this one, seem to tolerate being photographed. Here is a rather fancy jumping spider that we found in our backyard. It only showed up last year and we're hoping to see it again this year. You may have seen videos of male peacock jumping spiders doing a dance with their front legs. This one did the same thing. It may have been responding to its own reflection in my camera lens. We were super excited. We had a family of nuthatches living in our tree. You can tell that the birds in the middle are, are younger because they have yellow around their beak. The bird at the bottom is an adult because it has a black beak. And they suddenly started to make a whole lot of noise and we were trying to figure out what it was that was causing them to do that. And this was why. Cats eat birds and apparently the presence of this cat was upsetting. All these birds, bugs and plants were taken in our backyard and we really hope that it inspires you to go out and explore nature. We look forward to seeing you next week.